Okay, this is going to be a little bit of a longer video because I'm going to do a video breakdown or basically a response to a video. This guy's name, this guy on the right, I'm not sure who this guy on the left is, but this guy on the right, his name is Josh Reef. I guess he's a dating coach or a PUA coach. I'm really not 100% sure. I'm not sure how I got recommended this guy, but uh, probably just through hi hi him and his team's uh, internet marketing. But they do these. Um, they do these uh, talks, kind of like podcasts, and they're kind of like snippets where they talk for like 15 or 20 minutes on certain subjects, kind of similar to what I do. Um, and they kind of break it down from a little little bit of a red pill perspective, but mostly from a PUA dating um, men trying to hook up with women perspective. So I'm going to break this down. So he's talking about hypergamy here, and I've got a lot to say on this, so let's just get into it. And that's just not it. It's more like the the guy who looks like Leonardo DiCaprio who's got the money, who's got everything yeah. in the package. I see that. Yeah. It's more the hypergamy because, <clears throat> well, I'll get into my spiel on hypergamy, but I don't really see it in that context. I see the gold digger ones as pushed aside. Like guys are like, oh, those are gold diggers. That's one. I see hypergamy as the guy who looks like Leonardo DiCaprio, who's got a good job, who makes a lot of money, who's got the genetics and he works out and he's fit. And the guys are like, oh, I have no shot because of that yeah. guy. Hypergamy is a little bit less uh, obvious in the sense of, you know, yeah, you're right. Because if it's just a gold digger, then you can literally just be like, that's true. I agree with that. Um, straight up gold diggers, they are hypergamous, but it's a di it's a bit of a different story. You know, um, hold on a second. My mouth is dry as hell. Let me get some water. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, oh, damn. Got real bad allergies all night. Sorry about that, guys. So, um, yeah, there's definitely a difference between a woman who's a straight up gold digger and just bottom line hypergamy. And the difference is, is that a woman is hypergamous um, for a, for and in a relationship. A gold digger really, almost in a way, isn't really hypergamy. Gold digger, in a way, is almost just like, you know, th uh, thievery. It's almost just like a fucking, you know, she's robbing the guy, really. She's just lying to him straight up. Hypergamy isn't really a lie in and of itself per se. It kind of is, but it's not. Like, hypergamy is just biology. Hypergamy is um, a woman trying to get into a long-term relationship with a guy who has high value. That's what hypergamy is. Um, you could say that it's kind of a trick in a way. And really, the only sense that it's a trick or a lie is that men don't really understand it. A lot of men really don't understand it. They just think, oh, well, I gotta, I gotta make money so I can get a woman and I, I, and I gotta get ahead and I, I'm in this competition. They don't, they sort of subconsciously understand it, but they don't really get it from a red pill objective perspective. So let's go on here. Oh, she's just in it for the money. But exactly. They push more that so. aside. They don't, yeah. they don't view that as a loss. They say, well, I could get her if I had money, but I don't. So she, it's gross. She went with this old guy for his money. Yeah, yeah. But I'm losing to this other guy who's young and good looking and has money. And that's yeah. the guy I have no shot against. Because yeah. the guy who's old, they always think if I had money, I'd, be, I'd get her. Right? So they believe they could get her with money 100% because obviously she's... And that's some that's some interesting point. I, I mean, that's true. I wouldn't say that that's not true. What he's saying here, that, that's a good point. In it for the money, but whereas what real hypergamy that I see guys talk about is that I have no shot in hell because he's got the money and the looks. So even if I improve one area in my life, he's gonna always beat me, mm. right? And so two things I want to clarify. Which is true. That's a that's a that's an interesting point. I mean, and and it it just goes to show that women want the total package. It's not just money. Now I say now I I've said that in the past, but I say it in the sense that bottom line you have to have money is how i say it. it's like there's no question like money is just a given like money and looks you have to have those you just have to if you don't have money or good looks you can't even get your foot in the door what gets your foot in the door is money and good looks period now what can can amplify your effect is uh, on, on women on attracting women is status personality um social skills, things like that, the, that all plays into hypergamy. I mean, there's looks, money, status, bottom line, but status, you don't necessarily have to have status. If you have looks and money, you can get a lot of women if you just have looks, money, and a decent personality. You can get a lot of women for a long-term relationship. 
Status just really amplifies things. So looks, money, status, they are, those are attractors, but, but you don't have to have status. You have to have looks and money, 100%. If you don't have looks and money, you're just, you're, you're done. And money can trump all of it. It can, you know, I, I use that word trump and, and it's, a, it's kind of a pun because cause look at fucking Donald Trump. He has a shitty personality. He has an abrasive personality. I'm not gonna say he has no good qualities. I mean, he, he's obviously successful. Um, in his in his own game, right in the game that he plays, but um, he's he has an abrasive personality, uh, antagonistic personality, and he's also not a good looking man. He's very out of shape. He was never a great looking man, in in my opinion. Uh, maybe when he was like twenty, but you know. Anyway, I'm not you know judging dudes, right? But he's not a good looking man, clearly. Uh, but he's got a lot of power, and he's got a lot of money. And so he can get supermodels. W women will let him walk up and grab him by the pussy, as he admitted to Billy Bush in that famous Access Hollywood interview, right? So money can trump looks and status. It can. And money and power and status can trump I I everything. You don't even have to have a good personality, this, that, and the third. Now, does Melania Trump, is she really in love with Donald Trump? Fuck no. She's, she's eye candy. She probably sleeps around. She, her, her hypergamy was fulfilled. She got a man who made her offspring um, never have to worry about money for the rest of their lives, and they'll probably grow up famous. And I mean, that's, she hit the lottery for what she wanted. Now, women want different things, but the bottom line basic female nature always stays the same. Women want looks money and status period now in addition to that you do need a good personality you in, in order for her to really fall in love with you what really what, what a woman really falls in love with is your personality but if you just have a great personality but you don't have any money and you're bad looking you're you're not going to get anywhere she doesn't want you so it's like you know you gotta you gotta be able to look at it from different angles. Now, what I just said, it, it, it kind of plays into what he's going to talk about, so I'm going to, he, he, what he's going to talk about right here, so I'm going to press play. One is that there's biological reasons behind this, there's social reasons behind this, and we have to acknowledge this as a reality where people try and date up. But the problem is, mostly you hear this from guys, okay? Well, guess what, guys? <clears throat> we're doing it too. When we're trying to date up, we're trying to date up in terms of younger women, hotter women, more less women with less drama and red flags, mm -hmm. women who are into their fitness and health, women with good personalities. We're trying to date up too, so we're just as hypergamous as women are. Nope, I'm gonna stop you right there, Josh. You, you, that's incorrect. That's wrong. And the reason why it's wrong is because men do not require money and status from women. In fact. Many men actually would prefer if women don't because you got all kinds of new problems when she has money and status. She's, she has a bad attitude. She has a bad personality. She thinks she's over, uh, over deserving of things she really doesn't deserve. She's got a bitchy attitude. She's not going to help you succeed. She doesn't care about you as much because she's got her little life over here. She's got her little career and she's got her money. So she doesn't quote unquote need you. A lot of men don't want a woman with money and status because you do have those problems. She's not gonna be submissive to you. She's not gonna act, act, act feminine. She's gonna act manly. She's gonna act masculine because women who have these advanced careers and women who are um, ambitious in the, in the uh, world sense and the, and the you know, making money sense, she is not, she, she's gonna be more masculine. She, and I, I know I live with, I live with one of these uh, women who I lived with when I was 21. I lived with a woman who owned a boutique, and it was it was a high class boutique, uh, like like millions of dollars. She was she was investing and pulling in and, and things like that. And she was a boss bitch. She had this bossy attitude, and it was not fun living with her. She was a clean freak. She was controlling. She she had she flew off. She was she was emotional. She she flew off the handle. You know when things didn't go her way. You don't want those problems, man. Men, in fact, a lot of men, particularly smart men, you know, because there's a lot of men out there who just take what they can get, but smart men don't want masculine acting women. They don't want women who are career driven and uh, have high status. So you're wrong, Josh. It's not the same. It's really not the same. You're equating two different things and you're saying, oh, it's hypergamy. 
No, wanting a woman who's in shape and has a good personality is not hypergamy. That is just bottom line, basic, hu human. Everybody wants that. Both men and women want somebody who has a good personality and somebody who's in shape. That just goes without saying. That's not hypergamy, Josh. Hypergamy is when a when a person wants to date somebody at their same economic level or higher. That's what hypergamy is, Josh. You, you, you don't even understand what the word means. It's, it's about economics. It's about value, okay? It, value in a commercial, I, I shouldn't say commercial sense. I should say resource sense. Value in a resource sense. Now, you could surmise and you could say that female um, youth and female fertility has to do with attractiveness and this attractiveness is a sort of resource so men are exchanging finances and resources and and protection providership for youth fertility and female attractiveness that's true to a certain extent but but again it's not the same thing because all women have to bring to the table is attractiveness really a lot of times they don't even have to have a, a quality personality a lot of times and a lot of times they don't even have to be loyal because a lot of these guys will let let the woman step out and they, they'll forgive her or whatever they don't have to have a good personality that much anymore as long as she is you know sexy and as long as she, 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 yeah, she gives you the good sex then you will get you will give up that protection you will give up those resources in exchange for that so really it's not the same thing it's it's a false equivalency which you just did Josh so you know, again, um, women require men to have money, bottom line. Women require men to have money and looks, period. Men do not require women to have money. We want them to have looks, but we don't require them to have money. So it's equal only in really only the looks and the personality department. It's arguable whether that is really, whether that is really personality. Again, men are exchanging the resources for the, for the, youth and the fertility which is equates to attractiveness whereas women want attractiveness in a man too so it's really not the same thing and on top of that i would argue that a lot of men really um will i believe men love idealistically i don't believe women love idealistically i believe women love opportunistically for the most part I don't believe it's the same thing and people always try to do this and it's a real insidious trick they try to equalize things they always try to say well men do it too men do it too and this is one of these lies these modern lies that happens no it's not the same thing men are not doing it in the same way that women are doing it everybody wants someone attractive so that's similar but it's that's still not what hypergamy is and you know a guy will hook up with a, a five out of ten if she has a decent personality and she and she and she loves you and she's funny or, or she's she's chill or whatever a guy will hook up with a five out of ten a woman is not going to hook up with a broke guy it's just not the same thing so you're equating something that's not the same and i just have to disagree with that all right let's go on there's no like this argument that women are hypergamous is stupid because so are we. Mm -hmm. We just value different things. Mm -hmm. That's it. And we value, um, you know, their looks. We value their personality. We value not having them not having kids already. We value certain things of them. Again, women do the same thing for us. So it's not it's not the same thing. It's uh, women want these resources. We don't require that from women. So it's not the same thing. And then we expect them not to value things in us. Mm -hmm. So the big problem is that it's used as an excuse to give up and complain. Because hypergamy is nothing is set in stone. The idea that people, you know, that women want a richer guy, that want a better looking guy. That I don't think that guys are using it to give up and complain. I think that guys are at a loss of what to do because many of us are being edged out of the um, equation uh, of, the, of the race. We're getting beat out because there's always competition. There's always going to be somebody who's bigger, better, stronger, richer, better looking than us. And this is the problem. This is it. it, it, it you know, elicits this female hypergamy, this female behavior, which is monkey branching, which they trade us in for a better model. So we're nothing more than a commodity. We're nothing more than a product to women. And in fact, they commoditize themselves with sex. They turn themselves into a commodity and um, they sell themselves for the commodity that they want. And women are doing this. Men are not doing this. I don't believe men are doing this. I really don't. There's this whole set. There's this whole story that 
oh, men, men do it too because we go for, you know, younger women. Da, da, da. I don't think that that's really true. I, I mean, I think that guys with a lot of money and guys with resources and they, and they know the game and they're red-pilled, they probably will not want a 35-year-old woman who's had two kids, who is a feminist, who has short dyed hair, right? And so the, I wouldn't call that hypergamy. I would just, I mean, you could. And, and, and it's like, okay, fine. We'll, we'll say that's hypergamy. But that's not most men. And that, and that doesn't happen until later in life where, where the man has, has gone through, a, you know, he f has figured out female nature and he's like, fuck this, I'm just going to go for the younger ones and I'm going to just, just get me a trophy wife and I'm going to have the money to pay for her and that is what it is. So this whole argument that, oh, men, you know, go for the, these younger women and da, 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 that's not common. That is not common, but it is very common for most women to climb the hypergamy ladder. So again, a false equivalency. When a, there's all these lists of things you want a more confident guy but it's just attraction it's just like everything else the same thing status things like that that we know how to portray is just elements of attraction that's all hypergamy is is who displays the best uh elements of attraction just like a peacock who has the best feathers right? so how is that all good is, is saying like someone out you know women like to choose the best option available to them like seriously like does that need to be said yeah. like really is it weird are you going to complain that someone has 10 options on the table and they choose the best option mm. right see i don't believe men do the same thing i don't believe i really i think women are that way they will choose the best option and and there, because there's something in female nature that is just shallow like that i don't believe men are shallow like that i believe that men and, and I'm not saying all women. I think there are some women that aren't that shallow either. And so this is really a, it's, it's a poor argument he's making. It's really just a very shallow topical argument that he's making. Um, but I do believe that it, he's right in that most women will choose the best option. But I don't think men are like that. I really don't. I think men, see, there's this lost art, this lost, there's, excuse me, this lost, um, attribute and it's called love it's called finding your other half it's called being open to to love you know and i think that this is something that's lost in our culture everything is commercialized everything is productized that's not a word but everything is turned into a product everything is commoditized even human beings even love everything is commoditized go on the dating sites you can you know Type in what you want. Oh, I don't want a, a man who's under six foot. I don't want a man who makes under $50,000. It's like you're limiting your options. And, and the best possible option for all the things that you want might not be the person that you were supposed to be with. People used to believe in fate. People used to believe in love and finding your other half and shit like that. That has become so boxed out by all this kind of talk that, 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 that this guy's saying. And, and this is not uncommon. What he's saying is popular thought. That's why he's saying it. He's, he's just repeating things he's read or heard. He's not bringing anything more to the table original out of himself or anything like that. See, we've lost humanity, man. There's, there's some humanity that we have lost here. And... You know, what do you want to tell your kid? Oh, yeah, I chose my woman because she was fertile and young and she was hot, you know, and, and, and she had these great tits. And, and, and what does the woman tell, you, you know, the son or, or, or the kid or the daughter or whatever? Oh, yeah, I married your dad because he had the most money and he had a nice Mercedes. And it's like, uh, I mean, I get what he's saying also where he, he's saying like, oh, it's personality and um, all these other attributes. Yeah, I get it. Confidence. I get it, man. I get what you're saying. But again, you know, that's not really love. And, and it's like, how do you not know what love is, man? Like, how do people not know what love is? And then we wonder why divorce is at 60 percent. We wonder why everybody's cheating. We wonder why nobody's happy in their relationships and yet this is what this guy's talking about he's trying to normalize this shit like it's all good like it's just normal and it's like where's the love man where's the love like ice cream and broccoli and cauliflower and carrots what do you think i'm gonna choose yeah if i want to be healthy yeah but if i only have one shot at this i'm yeah. taking the ice cream yep
dude, what the fuck do you mean? You wouldn't take, you shouldn't take the ice cream. You should take the healthy shit. Take the fucking broccoli. Take love. You don't want all that other shit. You know, this guy just giving bad advice. That's my man. last meal. I'm taking the ice cream, right? Pizza, whatever. Not stupid. And so, like, yeah, it is stupid. That I should be eating carrots for my last meal instead of pizza or ice cream. No, I'm taking my shot. Love is healthy, bro. Love is healthy. So you're gonna want to take the carrots and the broccoli and the cauliflower, bro. Uh, bro, Josh. Um, love is healthy. You know, we we've lost these. We've lost these these attributes we've lost these values we value the quick shit yeah you want the ice cream you want the hot guy with the abs you want the ice cream you want the guy with the mercedes but what happens he cheats on you or it doesn't work out and then you and then you're just all sad because well i wanted him because he was so he was so good and he had so, he had so much money and, and, and it's just it, it's like it's cringy that's not love I don't know how many shots I get for if I want to get married. I'm taking one shot at this, so I'm gonna take the pizza. It's the best option. And you fucking idiot! This guy, come on, bro. I'm getting married, so I'm gonna take the pizza. You're gonna marry pizza, so you're gonna eat pizza for the rest of your life. Think about that stupid analogy. This idea is just a way to give up when it doesn't matter. You know, we all know that more attractive women are going to go to guys who display confidence, who look better, who are taller, who have more money. And we, as we've discussed in our other podcast. Yeah, and what happens? 60% divorce rate. So are, are their choices correct? Or are you just backing up their, their stupid choices, Josh? Podcast, there are ways around that. There are ways to be uh, more successful with women than a tall guy by being more confident, by having a better job and all these other things, by hitting the gym harder. It's just gotta work. See, he's just selling his shit. He's selling his shit. He's just a little weasel selling his shit, man. That's all this is, man. I mean, th this isn't any quality advice. This is just, you know, there you go, man. And this is just, this is just uh, bullshit advice given to people, you know, playing to guys' insecurities. Oh, why don't I have a girlfriend? Oh, well, well, you know, why don't anybody love me? Because I need to be more confident. I need to hit the gym. And uh, I, I better buy this guy's program so I can learn how to get women more. Like, no one's telling people, hey, seek the right woman. Seek the woman who really loves you, who really is so you're supposed to be with. The one who loves your soul. Not because you're confident. She loves you despite your, your shyness. She loves you despite the fact that, you know, you're fucking... 150 pounds soaking wet you're you know you're a weakling you're you're short you're not that attractive find that woman you know find that woman man he's not the, the, no, nobody gives good advice these days for it. and that's a problem these guys don't want to work for it they want to complain they want to stay at home they don't want to hit the gym they don't want to dress better they don't want to get a better job why would you want to work for a woman who only wants you if you're this advanced version she's shallow you wouldn't you shouldn't want that they don't want to do any of these things that can help them out. And then the other guys that complain get a better job, but they don't learn how to talk to women. So then they get bitter about hypergamy because they're like, well, I, I got a good job. I, you know, I don't look as good as that guy. So it's hypergamy. She just wants that. Mm. And so, it's all, you know, total crap because he's literally just got a job. Yeah. So what? Yeah. What's, what's the big deal? It's stability. Women want that, but that's not what attracts them that's what kind of keeps them there and says okay this guy's got a stable life yep but just having a job doesn't attract women yeah. just having some money only attracts a very small percentage of women mm -hmm. you know and they're usually young and it's okay i disagree with that you know again women wants to he's right he's right in that women want stability and he's right in that men do need to talk to women that is our unfortunately that's our burden we have to do that so if you do want a woman you got to go talk to her but again you know yeah, um, uh, fucking lost my train of thought. Okay, he said, um, yeah, no, I mean, he was right. Yeah, if you just have a job, like, you're not going to, I mean, yeah, you you need to actually go out and talk to women. I mean, yeah, but um, doesn't mean women aren't hypergamous. Doesn't mean you're still not going to get rejected. And I'm, and I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm not saying you shouldn't go out to talk to women. You, you know, if that's what you want, go for it. That's what I do. You know, I, 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 I've practiced cold approach pickup. Um but I'm, I'm fully fucking red pills. So it's like, I'm not doing it to, <laughs> I'm not doing it for a long-term relationship. I'm just doing it for the pump and dump, right? Because I know how women roll. Now, now, unless, you know, I just serendipitously meet an amazing woman who really likes me 
And it's not because I was putting on some front or learning how to talk to women and learning how to be more confident, but she likes me despite my all, all my fucking faults. You know, I'll never get into a long-term relationship. Period of their life where they like the money being thrown around. But I think guys way, way, way overestimate how many women are in it for the money and way underestimate how many women are just want stability. So women do want a guy with a job. Let's not be real. Now I can get women when I'm unemployed, but I wouldn't expect other guys to. You have to be, you have to be pretty, pretty good at what <laughs> okay, you're doing, bro. you know, attraction-wise, to overcome that or frame it properly. Um, but that said, you know, having a decent job, or if you work at a, not a good job, get a go to school, get a better one, um, or or learn online. Now you don't even have to go to school; it's free. So stop complaining because. It's all about framework, especially like hypergamy, like a woman, let's say hypergamy, just job alone. Woman wants a guy with a better job, okay? It doesn't, it's not that simple as the guy who has the better job is who she wants, okay? She wants the guy who's going to have this stable life and going to have that job, even if he doesn't already. So you can be a guy who's working at, you know, FedEx. You can even be a guy working at wage job but if you are studying in your free time even if you're not at a university if you're going to trade school or if you're out working online for it yeah anyway he's not saying anything i think i'm gonna end it there he, he's not saying anything that um well, there's only a couple minutes left maybe maybe, maybe i'll just keep going Hold and on. she sees you hustling and says i can't hang out with you tonight because i'm studying four hours for my electrical engineering apprenticeship that i'm gonna do she gonna she gonna want to screw that guy. She want to have fun with that guy. Maybe even date that guy because it's ambition. Whereas the other no, dude, that's hypergamy. That's not ambition. Yeah, he's ambitious, right? But it's her hypergamy. She's like, oh, he's gonna make more money down the road. Yes, women will invest in you. Women will invest in you if if they think you're gonna make more money down the road. That's a fact. The guys are playing video games at minimum wage jobs. She'll take the guy who's studying electrical engineering and can't. Hang yeah, out with she her will. Because he's doing that after. It's hypergamy, a Josh. Shop. You don't have to have the job. Now, if she compares him to the guy with the job, he's still going to have something else going, but it's not. All it is a little more confidence, and she'll take that guy. All right, I'm going to leave it there. He's, he's just going to start repeating himself. Um, yeah, man, I mean, what you're saying is true, and it makes sense, but, but the issue is is that you're trying to normalize it, and you're trying to act like that's, that's cool, that's okay, that's how it should be, which is animalistic. It's, you could say it's biology, but again... It's not love, man. Hypergamy is not love. So if she chooses the guy, you know, if the dude likes to play video games and she doesn't love him, I mean, she's she's shallow. Like, you could make the argument and say, well, that guy's just a loser. Well, what if he likes playing video games, man? What if that shit just makes him happy? Why can't she be happy when he's happy? If she really loved him, she would be happy when he's happy. I remember I had this girlfriend who always used to say that, and we, and we eventually broke up, and um, even when we broke up, she said, don't you want me to be happy, I, you know, I, I think she, she found another dude or something like that, and I was talking to her again, and I, I was kind of, I was kind of reminiscing, and then we kind of got into an argument or something, I forget how it happened, but I said some shit, and then she's like, don't you just want me to be happy, and, and, and I was like, yeah, I guess I do, and she says, well, well if you love me, then, you'll be happy that I'm happy with this other guy. And I'm just like, but that's not really how love, I mean, like, yes, she's right. Like, I mean, you know, it, 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 it wasn't correct in the way that she framed it. Like love is kind of possessive in the sense that if you love somebody, you don't want, you're not going to be happy if they're with somebody else. That's very difficult. It's a very selfless kind of love. Love in my opinion, is very is, is is possessive. Like I love you, and I and and you're mine. And a lot of times, these 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 women today, these feminists, they try to act like, oh, if you love me, you'll be happy that I'm sleeping with other men. And it's just like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Like you like that's definitely not a part of love, right? But um, why can't a woman be happy that men are happy? You know, because in her mind, she thinks, oh, he shouldn't be playing video games. He should be educating himself or bettering himself so that I can have a better man. Well, that's hypergamy, bro. But yeah, you, you, you flip it around and say, hey, why do you spend all this time doing your makeup? I don't like that. I don't like that you spend all this time doing your makeup. Why don't you do something productive? She would think you're a misogynist. She would say, you're a misogynist. You know, she would say, why can't you just be happy that I'm happy doing my makeup? You know, and it's like, she would say you're a so, so so it's a double standard. The fact is is that she wants you to 
advance and to be better for herself, for her own hypergamy, so that she can have a good quality man, so that she can have a nice social life, so that you can provide a nice lifestyle for her, so that she can feel like, good, I, I won in this life. And this is why I always say women live vicariously through men's successes. Women live vicariously through men's successes and the lifestyle that men provide for her. And this is all part of hypergamy. This is what they do. You know, this is why she wants you to improve for her. It's not for you. It's for her. If it was about you, if she was happy that you were happy, then she'd be totally cool that you were playing video games. So this is a really poor argument by this guy, Josh. Now, it's not that he, what he's saying isn't true. It's just that the way he's framing it is a poor argument. He's saying hypergamy is okay. And I've heard this so much. So many guys say hypergamy is okay. Is hypergamy okay? Is it really... She expects you to be this winning, successful guy. And even if it's ambition or even if it's confidence or whatever, you have to be something that you're not. Maybe you're just not that confident. You know, I mean, it's like, yeah, I want you to, I want guys to be more confident. But what I really want is for you to be happy in who you are. What I really want is for you to be happy uh, in your own shoes, playing your game, living your life. And if you have to change your life, change the way you act, change the way you behave, just so you can keep a girl or get a girl is is really not the way to go, man. And it's not that I want you to stay stagnant. It's not that I think that just being lazy and playing video games all day is the way to go. But I want men to be happy and I want someone to love them for who they are. So if you like playing if you like playing video games and it doesn't take up your life and is is a big negative draw on your life, then have at it and, and, and have fun and be happy. And a woman should love you for who you are and she should love you if you're happy. And if she can't, then that ain't real love, bro. That ain't the one. That isn't your other half. And, and if all women are like this, then fucking walk away. You know, if this is female nature, if this is biology, it's animalistic. I don't like it. I never liked it. And men can do better. Men should do better. And, and men should... We, we, we deserve better than that animalistic, you know, monkey branching, social ladder climbing, resource grabbing bullshit, man. If, and that's what hypergamy is. And that's feeling and that's female nature. So totally disagree with our friend Josh here, but I'm going to leave it there. Appreciate you listening. Jay Lee Northwest podcast. Peace.